Uh, my name's Chris Weisbart. As she said, we wrote the whole introduction out in our slides, so we won't repeat, repeat that part. Uh, I'm Jason B. True. Uh, and welcome to Hammer of the Gods. All right. Yes. Let's do that again. Hold on. Let me... Uh, let me, uh, there we go. Much better. Be ready for a lot of this. Um, All right. Uh, <laughs> so in this demonstration, we're going to tell you how to do something super, super useful. But uh, at the same time, we want to just state up front that this is also something that could seriously screw up a lot of things in your Canvas system. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so. so please be wary. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, so yeah, what is this? Especially all... because this is for non-coders. I mean, the, the whole idea is that we're going to tell you how to use the API without a lot of coding. Uh, but you, you should understand, you could just destroy a bunch of stuff, so, you know. Right. Yeah, and... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, what is this all about? Like Chris just said, um, we, we want to talk about ways that you can leverage the powerful Canvas API, even if you don't have a ton of coding experience. Um, and by using the API, you can save yourself a ton of time and energy in Canvas. At the Pasadena City College, where we work, uh, we have an online model course program that had to grow super quickly. Uh, in this program, we have several model courses, and each of those had to be copied uh, into numerous sections multiple times per term. Uh, and we, as admins, had to do all that, which we don't like. Right, and so we figured this kind of repetitive process should be exactly the kind of thing that a computer should be able to do a lot more efficiently than we can, right? So, so we started out uh, using Unix shell scripting. I had some experience with that. That sounds very programmy, but uh, it was an easy way to use the API. But um, uh, in the last few months, we've learned about another easier way to utilize the power of the API through a series of apps inside the Chrome browser. So this is what you'll need to do everything we're going to talk about today. And we're, Chris is going to do a live demonstration later where, where he'll touch on all of these things. But basically, it's access to a Canvas system, obviously, um, Google Chrome, uh, Google Docs, and Postman, which is an app that's available in the Chrome Web Store. And Postman is, uh, has a free version, but if you do a $9 upgrade, you're able to automate uh, pretty much the entire interface. And so this is where, without a lot of programming skill, you're going to be able to do multiple things multiple times. Okay. So yeah, um, first, before we go further, we, we keep using the acronym API. Um, so I just wanted to quickly define that for anyone who may not be familiar. As the slide says, uh, API stands for Application Programming Interface. So for lack of a better definition, one way we think of it is it's basically an opening in a piece of software that makes it possible to easily interact and share data and perform functions inside that software. Okay. For instance, uh, when Yelp needs a map of the restaurant or bar you're looking for, they're actually using the Google Maps API to create and display that map data, and then wrapping their terrible map interface around it. And that's, that's why you always take the link for the address and paste it into Google Maps. And so that's, that's an example of an API use. Right. Um, uh, similarly, uh, at least the last we heard, the Canvas mobile app is actually built entirely using the Canvas API. And the entire interface of the Canvas mobile app is constructed using API calls. So you can see this is a very powerful tool that allows you to do pretty much everything in Canvas through sending text commands instead of using the graphical interface. So uh, the same way the Canvas graphical interface requires a username and password, you need something similar in the API. Uh, this is called an API token or key. Uh, to use features we're talking about, you're also going to need admin rights. Uh, so talk to your Canvas administrator if you don't have those. You're going to need to have the right privileges in order to copy courses. So. Uh, so to get your key, I'll do a really quick demonstration, and then we can talk about this later if there's time. You log into your account. You access your account page by clicking uh, your name in the upper right corner. Uh, and then you'll click the New Access Token button on this page. And then Canvas will ask, ask you a purpose and an expiration date. The purpose is really just a, a tag so you know why you're using this. Uh, you don't have to set an expiration date. Uh, if you don't, then it never expires. But it might be good practice to create an expir expiration date. And again, we'll demo this. Uh, uh, step two? Did we not have a... Uh, oh, did we skip? Step two is access your user settings. On the, on the user settings page, and we'll try yeah. to pull this up later so you can see it in the full Canvas system, yeah. but there's going to be a button if you scroll down on that page that just says new access token. Yeah. Click that button. No, that's right. No problem. We go a little fast. We're going to slow it down. A half so, hour is a tough, uh, you know, it's all right, yeah. 
So once you uh, hit that generate token button, it'll give you this, a page that looks like this. Uh, don't take photos of my access code. <laughs> uh, the, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, so, uh, so basically you're going to have this access token. You want to copy it and keep it somewhere safe because you can't find this ever again. Sorry, Jason. Uh, you can't find this ever again in the Canvas interface. Um, you, want to, uh, you want to store it somewhere, and uh, uh, otherwise you have to regenerate another one. Yeah. And just to reiterate what Chris said earlier, um, the, the permissions or what you'll be able to do using this access token, it matches exactly with your account privilege, the privileges of your Canvas account. So if you want to do administrative functions like we're going to demonstrate, you will need an admin level account. Okay. 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 So here's where things get super fun. <laughs> You're going to want to install Postman, which is a, a super powerful, powerful API interface for Google Chrome. We don't really have time to go over all the features, but check under their page and, and read their discussion boards. Uh, you find this in the Chrome Web Store, and if you can't find the Chrome Web Store, do a Google search for Chrome Web Store, and then do a search for the Chrome, in the Chrome Web Store for Postman. And hey, this is for non-coders. I just want to cover all the bases. <laughs> and then you install it, and it'll put it in something called the Chrome App Launcher, which will show you what uh, it, it looks like. Uh, Postman has a powerful upgrade called Jetpacks, which, which is only $9, and it's free for a 14-day trial. So we want you guys to try it out, and I think it's totally worth the $9. Uh, the Jetpacks add-on lets you do a number of things, but what we're talking about today is you're able to perform a one action over a number of different times. For instance, uh, we're going to copy the content of a course over and over again to a number of different sections. Okay, so um, in order to use the Canvas API to talk to a specific course in Canvas, you need the unique course identifier. And you can find this identifier at the end of uh, the URL of every Canvas course. So as so you notice there, those uh, six digits right there, that is the unique uh, course URL code that you'll need for each course you want to do things to. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if you want to work on multiple courses at the same time, you need to give the Postman application a list of the URL codes for each of these courses. So we use Google Sheets to do this. You actually do have to use Google Sheets. Excel does not work, and we can explain why later uh, if you're interested. Um, and, and Chris is going to go over all this in, in, in a live demo in, in greater detail in a minute. But uh, basically, you create a new Google spreadsheet. Uh, in the very first entry, in the first column, you, you provide a label which will actually act as a variable, and we'll get into that. But in this case, we use the label course. And then beneath that label, we list the URL codes for each one of the courses we want to impact, essentially. Okay, and so once you've completed your uh, spreadsheet of courses, you need to download uh, the, the Google spreadsheet as a CSV file and save it to your computer, which you can just do through debt file download as comma separated values. Okay, so now we have all the pieces. You have Postman with Jetpacks installed. You have a list of course codes in .csv format. And we're going to provide you with our Postman file that we use to bulk copy courses. So please take photos of this. <laughs> um, uh, so, uh, and also don't forget, and I'll reiterate this at the end, uh, uh, these URL shorteners are case sensitive. So you got to use the right uh, capitalization. And we'll also have this slide up at the end too, if you guys need to. Uh, also, I have to tell you, uh, this is, um, you know, there's no warranty on this. <laughs> we are distributing this in the hope that it will be useful. No real or implied warranty, blah, blah, blah. Use it at your own risk, and don't blame us if you destroy all your courses. <laughs> in, uh, in one shot. Right. So, we believe it's time to unleash the hammer. Mm -hmm, Sound effect, mm -hmm, please. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Oh, wait, went too far. No. There okay, it is. Well, one more time. <laughs> yes. Okay. All right. So we're going to switch this up over here, and we're going to walk you through uh, everything, everything we can in time. Okay. Much larger. I'm going to change my resolution settings. How's everyone enjoying InstructureCon so far? Woo! A lot of fun, <laughs> good food, yeah. good times. <laughs> uh, windows. I just I worry that we're not going to be able to see all of the all of the information easily. So I'm going to scale the display. 
and it works. Okay. All right. So, um, so when you install Postman, it puts it in a couple places. Uh, the app launcher, which is, uh, it depends on which version of, of Mac OS, uh, OS X you have. You can, it might be a little icon down at the bottom. I go up to this icon and click on apps, and there's Postman in there. And when you first uh, install it from the, uh, from the Chrome Web Store, uh, it has this runner uh, button uh, grayed out. And when you click on it, it'll prompt you to then buy the jetpacks or try for free for 14 days. So that's, um, that's that component. And then what we're going to do is we're going to download uh, the file from that uh, Google uh, Drive uh, item that we gave you. And we're going to go to import in Postman. I'm just going to select import. I'm going to choose files I previously downloaded just in case all the internet went away. <laughs> it's called Hammer of the Gods Postman Collection. So I'm going to open that. And it says it worked, but there's no close button, so you just hit the little X. And it puts that in this uh, little shelf called, uh, uh, it's uh, your collection shelf. And when you uh, get that, you want to click on here, click on Hammer of the Gods, and click Open in Builder. And that will drop the script that we've prepared for you right here. And we've put in a couple keys uh, here that you need to replace. It's essentially all the capitalized letters with the uh, underscores. So our Canvas URL is canvas.edu. And then authorization is going to be your API key. And you want to keep this word bearer right there. You want bearer space your API key. And I hope you guys don't copy my. If you guys can memorize a string of like 80 characters, then you're amazing. You probably don't, don't need this session. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to take, this is my, this is actually what the old uh, shell script that I wrote to do the same thing looked like, uh, but which we can go over uh, later on after, after the session if you guys want to. But. Okay, so everybody understands that. You put your uh, Canvas URL here. You put your API key down here with bearer space, and then my API key begins with a six, so that's what that looks like. And then you go to the body a tab, and in the body there's an area for the source course ID. And magically, I have a Canvas course with my, the course that I want to copy, which is called Test Course Wisebart, very creative name. Uh, I'm going to copy the URL code, course code, from this. And so we're going to say, I want to copy this course into a number of different courses. Yes, everybody get that? <laughs> yeah, okay. Well, we can, well, well, we can walk, work, work one on one if you don't. Okay, so I'm gonna put the course code for the Canvas course I wanna copy from into here. And then I want to save this. I'm gonna hit save button over here. So you changed a total of three things, right? Exactly, so the first thing I changed was our URL uh, for, Canvas, for our Canvas installation. Uh, we're going to change our, uh, our, our token, which uh, we generated by going to, this is the question you asked before, if we click our username in Canvas and we go down, we can click the new access token button. And here's where I put a purpose. Um, registration, I'm going to have it expire uh, today at 2.33. <laughs> Uh oh. And PM done. And then I'm going to click generate token, and ta da, here is my token. Okay. So I am going to take that. That's uh, what I should have, I guess, pasted into here, but I'm not going to paste that because now that expired. So I have my, uh, my, my token in here, and I'm going to go now to Google Spreadsheets, and I'm going to copy some uh, URL course codes. Let me delete. This is a the one we did to test our, our presentation. So uh, first we're going to use the word course as our, as our label for what we're going to do. And we're going to go, I prepared a number of courses in Canvas that are just empty courses. They're called API course copy test one through three. And I'm going to grab that URL code again. Uh -huh. Uh, no, not the way that we're doing it. Uh, and again, we've kind of just been doing it this way. So if, if you know another way, we could probably look into that. But uh, what we're using is the course codes, not SIS codes. So you're talking about the code in your schedule of classes. Yeah. You can't. That's one, uh, one of the limitations of the Canvas API is you could do a search for a course by name or by section number, but it will, uh, you, then you would need to parse the output of that. 
right? What was that? No, it's different. It's, this is the Canvas, the Canvas uh, URL code is very different. So you want to, we'll make that distinction a little bit. We don't know how to do that. Like I said, what you could do is you could generate, you could make an API call and then parse all the stuff that gets back. And you, know, you can download yeah. reports. So you can, yeah. and then you can kind of remove it, search and replace uh, in, an Excel, uh, in an Excel document, yeah. 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 Okay, so I'm sorry. So I'm going to copy these in. And uh, so in each one of these, I am going to take the next URL code, drop them in my Google Doc. It's a good idea for an app, though, if somebody is a developer, would be something you can run on your system that would translate. SIS codes into yeah. URL course codes. Sure, and I'm Spit sure you have the power to do that. We can only speak to what we, we've yeah. done. And so, uh, okay, so now I have my sample of the three courses I want to copy stuff into. I have that in my Google spreadsheet. I have this word course in the first column. Now I'm going to download this as a .csv. Uh, so download as, comma, separated values. Click that, drops it in my downloads area. And this course label gets a little confusing why you would need that, but let me show you. Uh, what a Jetpacks does in Postman is it allows you to take uh, any part of the Postman interface and use two curly braces around a word, and then you can go through and uh, substitute things. So it, it acts as a variable, as Jason had said in the presentation. So by using, I could name this anything, and as long as I change in the spreadsheet whatever that label is, and, uh, and I can go through and iterate through and replace it. So it's pretty cool. The Jetpacks thing for nine bucks, not a bad thing. So I already saved this with all the new data. Let me show you how to import that .csv file. We're gonna go to the uh, collection shelf. We're gonna select Run. And then uh, in this, uh, in this uh, interface that pops up, you're gonna select Choose File. And I just downloaded this uh, course code sheet. And I'm gonna open that. And when you're able to do that, you're able to hit Preview Data. And it shows three iterations with the appropriately labeled course. And uh, we wanna change, it doesn't, one thing it doesn't do is it doesn't give you, put the iterations in automatically, so you just have to change that to three. So that's a real important step because uh, you only will do it one time if you leave that as one, so. We've done, I mean, our course, uh, one, one course maybe gets copied to 30 sections, you know, like, uh, yeah, and I've actually, I've done that with the shell script more than I've done it with Postman because that's what we were using before, and that uh, is it's very fast. And so that's, again, uh, very dangerous. <laughs> so you gotta make sure, we're gonna say this 100 times, make sure that course you wanna copy in is the, uh, is the right one, because going through and, and deleting that stuff is, a, I mean, you can use the API to go through and bulk reset courses, but then the URL code changes. So that's one, uh, and we'll go over that at the very end too. Okay, so I chose my file, I looked at how many iterations I had, I set it to three, and then uh, I hit the start test run. And you're gonna get three different messages that happened so fast you couldn't see it, but it said okay three times. And now when I go to uh, those Canvas courses that I had, the API course copy, and if I go to the, I can view the content migrations in the uh, course settings page. Uh, you can see uh, we're pre-processing. For each one of these, we're pre-processing a course move. So I'm gonna go to all of these, just to prove to you guys, because I know you doubt me. <laughs> <laughs> so all three of these are now pre-processing, and uh, after a while, uh, if their internet works, I, there was nothing really in that other course, but you, you, you have copied the contents into that course. All right, questions, lots of them. Go for it. All right. No. So three, I guess I, this might be a dumb question. No, no dumb question. I think I just have one course that I want to copy 30 times. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. No, so we're not co creating copies. We're importing into, you now have the feature. When we started this, there wasn't that course copy feature where you're just able to kind of copy the course numerous, numerous times. But this was, uh, this is more, we need, we have a certain amount of content in this course when we want to push this out to 30 different existing courses. Our SIS uh, course loads create all the courses already for us, so we can't use that tool. So we are automatically generated like, oh, this model course has like a dozen courses under it. And so we're pushing that one model course content to those 30 courses. Is there a way to have one course that you want to be copied 30 times and just 
Um, I, I would imagine there'd be a way to script that for sure. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, is there a way to use the course copy feature that's in the Canvas uh, UI uh, to just, uh, through the API? And we haven't researched that because we, it's not, it doesn't apply to us, but as Jason said, the Canvas mobile app is pretty much written entirely out of API calls, and so you have access to most everything you can do in the GUI through the API documentation, which we'll get into uh, at the end of this, where to find the documentation. And if you learn how to do this one thing that we're doing, you, it makes it easy to just paste different uh, endpoint, API endpoints and, and do the same thing. There's another. You can, now there used to be, uh, in Canvas, there used to be a, a flag for copying uh, just modules, just files, and I haven't found that, but th the fact that you said that there's unique identifiers for files in particular, I, yeah, I, I imagine that you have the ability to do that because it would be odd for them to strip that away when they upgraded to the newer version of the API. So, haven't done that myself, but I, I would imagine. In the back? First of all, you rock, thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you. Um, It moves over course settings. So here's the problem with, without, uh, should, if, for those of you who didn't hear, does it move over things like your, your course settings and how you do stuff? Uh, it does move over anything in the course settings area. And um, one of the problems with not having a flag for just moving modules or just moving files that we found is you always copy over another front page and it makes the front page kind of just pop up into whatever class. So you know, we're still working through a lot of those specifics. We've kind of used this for what we do, and we're encouraging you to, and please tell us cool ways you've used this. Well, that's my question. Yeah. Because if you do a regular copy in, uh -huh. just a regular copy of Canvas course, whatever was a designated front page is gone. You're stuck with the default. The default, yeah. <laughs> sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, no. okay. Sorry, so oh, you know, Canvas, my front page is gone. Yeah, yeah. So it's not, it's On ours. Well, in ours, when we, we've done it, we've actually, so we, our, all our model course programs have a, have a front page that is brought in. I don't know the specifics, if that's called the front page or if that's the modules page. I have to look. Yeah. Sure. Let's, she's saying that the front page, when she copies course uh, materials in, doesn't get set as the front page. And let's test that out, because I, we can do that afterwards. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that hasn't been our experience, for sure. The front page has come over successfully using... This, this migration, at least. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah. It works on, well, it, let's see how your courses are formatted, and let's see. Yeah, well, again, it's case by case. We just figure out how to do it, and then yeah, <laughs> kind yeah. of duct tape it together. Go ahead. Have you used the Canvas Live API? So we're going to talk about that oh, okay. in a second, yeah. So uh, let's, let's, we'll get to that in a second. All right, this is the part um, where we once again re reiterate please, please be careful and, and exercise extreme caution when you're using these tools. You got five minutes. Okay. okay. So that, that's plenty of time. So what could possibly go wrong? Uh, pretty much everything could go wrong. You can <laughs> copy a bunch of stuff in that you don't want and then have to manually go through. Let's say you have an existing stuff in the course and you use this API script to copy more stuff, then you're going to have, in many cases, twice the amount of data and teasing it out is a total pain. Um, yeah. uh, again, you can reset the, uh, the courses, but then that changes that course URL string that we put in our, uh, our, our spreadsheet. So just be super careful, triple check, try this out on your beta sites, and learn. The one thing that we always want to tell people is, you know, use these API documentations to really learn, test things out, and then before you do a, a big course deployment. Right, because you don't, you know, want to get fired <laughs> for yeah. erasing everyone's courses, basically. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, we call this the hammer of the gods, but really it's more like a multi-tool. Yeah, and uh, you know, like I said, learn things, test things thoroughly, and then deploy a bunch of courses. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, because the Canvas API is, you know, and we're I, we would not define ourselves as experts of the Canvas API. We've just used it for specific things we use it for, but we know it's much more broad and inclusive and powerful than just this one example, obviously. And you know, like we said, like with the example with the Canvas mobile app, you can use the API to control nearly every aspect of your Canvas installation. So okay, so to get to uh, so there is Canvas API documentation. Uh, you can just do a search for Instructure API documentation. But one cool thing about this is that Canvas actually, outside of Postman, Canvas supplies their own GUI for uh, using the API. And it corresponds very directly with the documentation they provided. So it's really nice because what you do is you go to this page, your Canvas URL, 
slash doc slash API slash live. And you're brought to a page uh, with a bunch, all of the, I don't know if it's all of them, but uh, most of the API endpoints. And what you do is you paste that access token in the upper right corner and you click save and once you do that, you're able to uh, do all the things that your user has permission to do in the API. And it brings you like a pull down menus and you're able to, to so instead of, this is if you only wanted to do one thing one at a time. The Postman is really good, the uh, app is really good for, for scripting and for iterating things. Okay. okay, we're running out of time, but do you guys have any other questions? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, we, yeah, we can't say that enough. Do it in beta, do it in test, and uh, yeah. Okay. Um, so if you want to take a picture of this screen, or um, we're going to work on, we're going to make this uh, presentation available. We haven't done that yet because we had to had a last minute snafu. <laughs> but uh, we're going to make the presentation available however we need to do that. But in the meantime, this is a, an email address that will go to both Chris and myself. Uh, at Pasadena, and then once again, this is the link to the Postman file that you can download and import into Postman and, and manipulate and edit to, to use for your own purposes. Any other questions? Well, thank you all so much for coming. Yeah, this is great. Just under the water. Yeah.